All right, so there's the Genoa right there. And I've already put the two main, main stay sails up. So there's that one, it's all furled up and it's all, it's a navy blue. And then same, all three of them had to get, so I had to take them, so there's the sail, the Genoa. So I had to take them, power wash them lightly, clean them, and then take them to North Sales in Annapolis. And they put those, see where the blue is on that sail? Those are put there for when you furl them up. It protects the sail. So the sun is beating down on that material when it's furled up and not the white part of the sail, which, so it's protecting the sail. So I took that sail, that sail, and that sail, and had them, let me turn this around, and had those, I took them to North Sales, and then they, it was 40, I had the Genoa restitched. So the big sail on the very front, and they had to restitch it. And then that was about 800 bucks or so, I guess. Anyway, it all came to like $4,300 to do that. And so it was not, you know, this, but those sales cost probably six, five, six, seven thousand dollars a piece. So I didn't want to really spend, I'm new at sailing, I didn't really want to spend, buy new sails and then, you know, tear them up. I would rather just take the old sails, learn to sail, and that way if there's an issue, <laughs> if I rip them, it's not that it, that's not going to sweat me because I've only got a, maybe a thousand dollars in each sale, maybe twelve hundred bucks. So that's what I did. So I went and fixed them up. So they'll last. They'll probably be good for a couple of years. And then when uh, I want to take off and go across the ocean and really do some hard sailing, then I'll buy new sails. And uh, so then that so that was forty three hundred bucks. Now let's turn around. I see that that spool. That's a spool of. Five eighths, and that's a spool of seven sixteenths, and that's another spool of five eighths. So there's three spools, and then so all that's rope. And uh, I think there's one, two, three spools down there. But anyway, it came. So see all the rope right here. You have to replace all that rope. All the rope that was on there had been upset. This boat had set for two years, no, yeah, two years in the water like it is now. And it, and nobody's done, did anything to it. It just set here for sale. And I don't know, maybe the guy took it out every once in a while, but I don't know. But it's set in this water for two years for sale and nobody bought it. And then it set on the hard here in Harchie for two years for sale on the hard, just sitting out there. And, they, and they, the guy had covered it up with plastic. And uh, then I came along and bought it. And then I came and cleaned it up and cleaned all the inside up. Not the bilges and stuff, just the, just the whole inside. I probably wiped it down. And then that chemical, I bought this chemical. You can buy this chemical at Home Depot. That's a, like a, oh, it's, um, I don't know, some kind of mold kill. And I sprayed the whole thing. And then I I came back like two or three times, but I was really busy. I was building a, uh, redoing a house. I had flipped a house and made enough money to where I could buy the boat. And then I needed money to fix this boat up to where I could sail it. And it's not cheap, man. It cost me, you know, I had to put, you need some money. So... I had to flip another house. So in some of the other videos I do in the, I do, I'll show everybody some of the houses and what I had to do to flip those houses and what it took and how much money I made. But the, so I flipped, I had to flip another house. So I flipped the house, the last house and got up here and that took me like a year and a half. So the boat sat here for another year and a half after I cleaned it up. And I thought, you know, I'll spray the mold on there and the mold kill and, 
everything will work out and when i get back it'll be all nice and kind of fr it'll be fresh and, and it'll hold back all the stink well that was a that didn't happen so when i got back well the plastic that was on it i had taken the plastic off and i had a company for 1200 bucks put it up cover it back up with plastic but it really didn't make a difference when i got back the the uh the boat leaks it's got an old teak deck on it and it leaks so that, like let me show you so you see right there that is a prism so there's a prism there and another prism there and another prism there and there's another one so they all leaked and then like this teak is wore out so then right there that's that he has tightened these up to where it pulled up on the deck and but I don't think you can see it but right there there's a crack so it right there see where the right there it's cracked because he's pulled up on that and it's and it was leaking so water's going all down in the boat so when so that it and whenever the water gets inside the boat, it travels down into the bilges. And I had left the, I left this boat here, set here on land for like a year and a half. Well, when I got here and I opened the bilge, the water had filled up the whole bilge where it pumps out up and it was touching the bottom of the motor. So there was probably 200 gallons of water in the bottom of that boat of this boat when i got here so it, was, it wasn't a good thing but so i pumped you know i just pumped it out and it went on the you know i pumped it out and fell it went out out of the bilge and went on the ground and then they're up here here they have like a they have bulldozed away the dirt filled it up full of gravel covered it up with a some fabric and then put gravel again and then they have it it all filters down to this one area so whenever oil or soap or the chemicals from the paint bottom of the paint when they sand it it all falls to that gravel water it leaches down into the system and then it goes to this tank and it gets gone it goes through a filter and then that way it, it keeps it it doesn't keep all of it from going into the ocean but it it keeps a lot it helps so that's this boat's a big project, and uh, I am close to sailing it. I suppose yesterday we supposed to left and go and went to Delaware, so I could leave now. So when I got here, when I got here, the first thing I had to do was check all the through holes and replace all the through holes that was that were uh, bad and that wouldn't shut off. So I replaced all those, put a new alternator, put a new star, had a star, the starter rebuilt, and uh, bled the, put new fuel in, figured out how to transfer the fuels from, see, it has five 50-gallon tanks, and all the fuel from the, to run the generator and to run the diesel motor all comes out of tank one, and then to get, all the other four tanks, you has a, has a little transfer pump, and it runs through a filter and it transfers it into one. So you're always pulling off of one, and the other ones are just holding tanks. And then there's lots of there's like 20 valves down there to figure out how to use. And same thing with the generator; it pumps out of one. So you're getting a, the filters are in different microns. So to, when you transfer, it's run through a two micron filter, which is probably the smallest you can get. And it, so that it keeps the, all the fuel in tank one super clean. And then, uh, then I had to learn how to bleed the system. And it was pretty simple. There was another pump that has two filters. And it just 
pumps it pumps directly out of the tank one runs through a filter and it's probably 30 micron i don't know maybe 50 i don't know what it is and you turn the pump on and you go to the place where it bleeds to the last point so it's at the distributor there's a just on a diesel there's like it's called like a distributor pump and there's a little nut you undo the nut the fuel the turn the pump on you do it until it until all the air comes out and then fuel comes out i shut i i close the nut off turn the pump on off and she fired right up and she ran and she ran good so then i went to the transmission i put it in gear and it was when i put it in reverse it was going clank 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 like a noise that was pretty loud and then i put it in reverse so there's only forward and reverse that's all there is there's no gears except for forward and reverse and it made a little bit noise but i think there's a damper there's a damper in there in the flywheel it connects to the flywheel and uh it has like a a little springs in there so when the motor engages on transmission the springs take the load of the of it turning and those springs wear out and then they start clattering around so that's you know you have to take transmission out put the damper new damper on it put the transmission back on but i think it'll be all right to get us up to delaware we're going to stay here we supposed to have left left yesterday but i mean look look at the ice it's all ice I mean, I could go through that ice. It's just a thin sheet of ice, but I've not. We kind of, kind of moving, kind of behind schedule, and uh, the. So, I'll. Uh, we're gonna go down to Florida, warm up a little bit for Christmas, come back, and then we're gonna take off and go up to Delaware at this other marine. It's on the C&D Canal. It's up in Delaware. And uh, my wife, she got a job up there. And uh, I'll, pull her, I'll pull her back out, and I'll sand the bottom, pull the rudder off. The rudder needs to be taken off, and the bushings and stuff replaced on the, on the rudder for the rudder to move back and forth easy for the, uh, for the uh, what do you call it? your self-steering has a shaft that opens and closes and it moves the rudder back and forth to where it steers by itself through your navigation and autopilot and it won't work with a rudder that's stiff it'll wear it out so that has to get fixed so i have to do that and uh i think i'll buy a new prop and uh, the props for this boat's about 2500 bucks. You know, I'd probably get away with the old prop. But, you know, that, I just, I don't know. I don't want, the problem is I was just going to take off and go down to Florida right off the get-go. But we called around Florida. There's nobody that'll pull this. There's no, really no places. It's hard to find a place in Florida to pull the boat that'll let you pull the boat out, live on the boat, work on the boat yourself, because none of them want, they all want to work on your boat. And I think they're all in cahoots together to where they won't let nobody work on their boats. And uh, I found one place, but my draft is 7-2, and you had to be around 6-6-2 six, six, on a high tide just to get in there. So they didn't work. So now, so I'm going to go up to Delaware, get all the work that needs to be done when it comes to having to pull this boat out. Then I'm going to take off down to Florida.